Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try to make sense out of how our atmosphere heats up. It does so in a number of ways. But first of all, let's consider the radiation that, that arrives at the Earth, at the upper atmosphere. And let's first start talking about the really high energy radiation, UV, X-rays and gamma rays. And those, that radiation is primarily responsible for heating up the ionosphere, which is also called the thermosphere, and for good reason, because it can get quite hot up there, but not because the air is very dense and your skin would feel the heat if you were exposed to it, but simply because the molecules of the atmosphere have so much energy up there, are moving at such high velocities, that the temperature will reach up to many thousands of degrees. Also, we have a temperature increase here in the stratosphere, so by the time the, we reach the upper troposphere and go into the stratosphere, it can get quite cold around minus 50 degrees centigrade. But then as we go further up, we can see that the temperature increases again. So we can see that here also heat is absorbed and we're going to take a look and see why that is so. Well, first of all, let's take a look at gamma rays. Gamma rays come in with such high energy that they will actually penetrate the entire ionosphere, the mesosphere, and the very high energy gamma rays will actually make it into the stratosphere. Now, those are typically pretty rare, doesn't happen very often. Most of the lower energy gamma rays will be stopped by the nitrogen and oxygen molecules before they're able to reach the mesosphere. So much of that energy is already absorbed in the ionosphere a little bit in the mesosphere, and for the rare occasions that very high energy gamma rays arrive, they're stopped by the time it reaches the stratosphere. Notice that all of the X-rays do not penetrate past ionosphere, so you can see that a lot of energy is absorbed in the upper atmosphere by absorbing primarily X-rays and some of the gamma rays. Then when we look at UV, there's different types of UV. The high energy UV does make it through all the way to the mesosphere at times, the UVC, which is very high energy uh, relative to the A and B, uh, doesn't make it past the ionosphere, so additional heat is being dumped into the ionosphere with the high energy UV. We know that the UVB rays, they, do all, they come all the way through, and they're finally stopped in the stratosphere because of the ozone layer. So there's an ozone layer here, which is able to stop the UVB radiation. So let's go ahead and put the ozone layer down here. And the UVA radiation does make it all the way through to the, to the Earth's surface, and that's the UV radiation that will cause sunburns. So you can see here that the primary heating of the ionosphere is a high-energy UV, X-rays, and gamma rays. Gamma rays are relatively rare, but X-rays and high-energy UV are not, and therefore the ionosphere does heat up by absorbing this radiation. And we can see that the stratosphere heats up because it primarily uh, absorbs the UVB radiation, which is plentiful, coming from the sun. And we can see the effect it has on the atmosphere. The ionosphere or thermosphere gets heated quite a bit, to a tremendous amount. And we can also see that for being this hot, far up in the, in the um, atmosphere, typically from about 10 to 15 kilometers, all the way up to almost 50 kilometers, you can see that being this high up, it's amazing that the temperature reaches almost zero degrees centigrade by the time we get to the top of the stratosphere. And this is primarily because of the radiation absorption, primarily the UVB radiation. Now, interesting enough, we're going to talk a little bit more about the troposphere. And notice that we have a continual decrease in temperatures who go higher and higher and higher up, even though the top of the troposphere is a source of heat retention from radiation coming from the sun. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but apparently it doesn't appear to have much of an effect on increasing the temperature of the upper troposphere. So we, we kind of have to figure out why that is so and, so, and why the temperature gradient continues to decrease from the Earth's surface all the way to the top of the troposphere. So we'll come back and take a look at that part of the heating effect of the atmosphere and under, try to understand why the temperature gradient is the way it is.